thought, at first I thought the, the bass line call from the beginning of the game was a melody too, and then I saw the replay and it was a good call. That's what's terrible about that. Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and start on the retreat. People thought it was going on because I don't think it helps me. Um, the first thing we're going to start with is board membership, which everyone should have a new binder and um, all the information, the whole packet inside, so that we can go over this today. And the first thing we're going to do the review current membership and requirements. Um, and please look over that and um, see if you have any questions about the people there. Candy, in part, that was my idea because uh, I, I think it's going to be a good idea with how just sort of vague and subject to interpretation that the statute, the uh, session law is to begin with, to periodically just sort of review the membership requirement that says one third shall be, you know, uh, working for businesses that collect the tax and three quarters shall be involved, actively involved in the promotion of tourism. There is no legal definition of that latter term. Um, but I think the board needs to sort of, when the town appoints members on that basis, um, but again, we don't really have a clear definition of what it is to be active in the promotion of tourism. Um, I just thought it might be helpful for the TDA right now to go through its membership and decide, okay, who here, because I don't know, and maybe you have and I haven't been around for it, but I think it would be helpful to say, okay, our one-third requirement is met because these members collect the tax and our three-quarters is these people are all uh, active in promotion of tours. Does that make sense? Right. Um, from looking at it, I know that the three that um, me, Matt, and Mike are basically the only ones that are really, well, Matt's not, but me and you are the only ones that's collecting money. I collect also. You collect. Vicky also. Okay. Yeah, okay. That means and the one-third requirement. Rental. Vacation rental. Vacation rental. Right. Okay. And Beverly. members count again for that for the three quarters so there's four there so who else and and what does the TDA feel that active in the promotion of tourism means that that was basically from the uh, the uh, quilt quilt so the quilt trail uh -huh. so that's actively promoting tourism Matt's got the uh, Stay and Play in the Smokies yep. website, which is definitely a commercial good. Karen is a downtown business that promotes tourism. By advertising. And Ellen was. Yeah. And Ellen also. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the <coughs> Of course, the town of Franklin is actually all fucking tourism myself. Until somebody passes a law that tells me that's not. That's <laughs> well, that's revived. Would think yeah. so. Yeah. Is there any question here about any of the board members not being really tourism? And basically, you said one third and then one fourth, which is kind of. Three quarters. It adds up to a lot more than honors for mm -hmm. uh, The notebooks, if you guys, what we designed them to look like is basically what I have is the TDA guidelines, so everybody's on the same page, what we're looking at, what we're going over. 
and we'll go over most of it through not tonight throughout the agenda I know it's got the rules of procedure and then I had asked you guys and I've got most of the responses about the only thing I have right now is just email addresses but I'd also like to uh, put together a contact sheet with mailing addresses and phone numbers just for us all when we're on the same page um, but the notebooks are designed you can fix them the way you would like um, but all the packets that you have as far as forms contracts is what the what I have so everybody's on one page and we did put monthly tabs in here too so each month you can put the agenda and the packet in so if we ever need to go back you can have that to look at how do we start this how do we start yeah, this conversation yep. it's reviewing the and then also yeah. someone questions. just mentioned about getting just, addresses because we will now be only we'll be sending the agenda out and contact will all be through the mail be no email um, it will just all be done by mail mm -hmm. so if we can get the correct address and everything for everyone we will be sending everything out your agenda and your packet will come out monthly by mail and i can funnel everything that way you have one source Any other discussion? I just missed that last mm -hmm. part. Could you say agenda and uh, sorry, I have a code. No. Um, agenda and packet will be coming by mail, mail. every month mm -hmm. instead of by email. That way we can send it through the town because most of us don't have a town email address. You're using your personal. This way everyone can get it Got it. at their home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nope. Mm -hmm. No printing or anything that'll come straight to you. That way you can have it in your binder for me. Is there any other question on that? Sorry, I'm, I'm a little late. I'm kind of reeling <coughs> a little bit. We just um, started. Just okay. okay. Um, this is a what, what part of the packet's coming by mail? Your agenda, okay. any grant request, any packet that you normally get on a monthly basis when mm -hmm. we have our meetings, that will become by mail. Okay, and what in the reason for that? Um, that way that everybody will get the packet and we won't have to do anything by email since everything is usually people's personal email, um, phone. This way you'll have it in hand. Okay. And how is there no cost involved with that? We didn't say there was no cost. It's okay. no cost to you. Right. It'll be coming through the town. I'll have the agenda in the packet. She will mail those out from the town. Okay. What do you think on that, John? Would, that, would like that be the best just to funnel it through email. one source? Yeah. And I'll be the source? For reasons that we'll get into under number four on the agenda, it'd be better to avoid. You know, it's okay. It's one thing to send out the agenda by email, but it just almost invariably leads people to want to try to discuss things that are in it by email. And again, for reasons that we'll get into, it'd be better to be better practice not to not to do that. And also, I can see the I don't know how much had people been printing individually just the agenda, or was it the agenda? Yeah, the grant was. It was just really not through. fair to put people on a board, board and then yeah. yeah, and then not pay them anything and not pay for printing and expect them to do all that. So because yeah, I print it when I get here and it's sitting right in front of me. So right. it's like <laughs> one of these two that's gone off. Yeah. Any other questions? This retreat is for discussion. This is just your regular meeting. So right. I just I just think it's a bit wasteful, my point of view. I mean, give us all a town email address. John? I don't know. Is that I mean to mail to print to them? mail? I mean. This would be the only place I would want to allocate it by mail. So if we what receive it, that'd be fine. But once anybody communicates back about, you know, any item on that agenda, no, now we're kind of discussing something right. through our emails that are not on the record. Or, right. Is that what it is? And we'll get into that in more detail, like I say. But well, it sounds like we're going to be clear about all that in a minute. 
I mean, about no discussion via email, whether regardless if it happens in the future or not. Um, Clear as a matter of degrees, though, and if I, I can't <laughs> dare well, yeah, I agree. Other, John, let, me ask let me just say there are other we boards that represent that I still can't get the members to grasp. That. We'll see. Well, it's always, always going to happen. <laughs> let me ask you this, John. What if, um, this is for discussion as well, what if we funneled if the members aren't in agreement to have it mailed to them? Would you want me to be the contact person that emailed everything out? I mean, that's for the board. It's how you guys want to get it. I'll just be your contact. You'll have one point of entry. Well, I think what Matt was, was saying is if we had a separate email address just for this, and then that would keep it off our personal emails. And, I mean, that would be an issue with, with the government. Yeah, I'd have to discuss that, discuss that with the government. And I don't know if the, if the town wants Safe. all of us in on well, I'm, well, there I don't again, know why don't, if it, to make I, it simplified, why doesn't it just go to one person, Summer? I don't mind bringing you the, the agenda. You can send it out, email it, and everybody get it. Saves yeah, on paper, yeah. saves on postage, and it comes from a town address. That's I don't want to have one more email that I have to check. Well, and I don't know that <laughs> Kevin, honest. you know, when Kevin set up the, the email addresses that go to the alderman's, you know, the tablets, <laughs> they're all Gmail addresses. Just you know, that person's first initial and last name dot franklinnc at gmail dot com, and so I don't know. I don't think it would be that big a deal for him to do if you wanted it. But and I'm not gonna when we talk about that. I'm not gonna tell you you all have to get a, some separate email address to, to to handle your TA emails. Um, so it's really it's really up to the board. Yes, whatever it's convenient, okay. but. How do you, how does everybody, how would you guys prefer to, it doesn't matter, man, I'll do whatever the will of the board is. I just rather, I mean, that's speaking for myself, I just not paper, I mean, I can pull it electronically up, I mean, just trying to be a good steward of town funds and et cetera. Big. I agree. Um, I don't care if you want to mail it to me, that's fine, but I do agree you're kind of paying money for printing someone to be doing the printing then the actual cost of the printing and postage sorry but anyhow um so email is obviously more cost efficient but i'll do whatever the you know board wants sorry does anybody have a problem with you giving the agenda to sign and having their email about mm -hmm. as long as i know that i've got it if i've got the brand, they have it to bring it to the meeting and to be able to keep it in a file after that. And I know that I've got to do that. That's fine. That's one thing. Um, but, you know, like I said, if, when we come here, we're doing, we're going out by email, and then we come here and just package it for us. Well, let's just do it. If y'all are approval of this, we'll email it out, and then we have the packet for you. That way you don't have to print it off, and there's no expense to you there again. And the only thing we need to do is email the agenda. Well, we want people to see the grant request and stuff ahead of time. So, I mean, it'd just be an email with the whole packet, and then we'll have the packet waiting when you when you okay. arrive for the meeting. Is everyone in favor of that? Sure. Is that the way we start? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's so what we're still, doing. Yeah, right. So we're still printing them, but, but instead of waiting, not ma mailing it out. Right. Instead of getting emails from everyone, you'll get it from one person, and then that's it. Okay. And it comes from a town address. Okay. Is that what you got? Okay. Upcoming vacancies. Appointment procedures. You know, um, Beverly, you'll be going home. Yes, um, November, December, I'm sorry. And then we know that Ellen has, um, is moving or has moved already. So I'm pretty sure. I mean, I thought she was going to be here today, but um, I haven't heard from her. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Completely different. Completely different business. It's going to be. Okay. 
Is that still on by her? Or is she, is she out of? Well, she's out of that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Deb was reappointed, but um, I'm going to be declining that reappointment. She has declined as of tonight. We'll give her resignation for that. So that would be four seats. Four seats to fill. Three. Oh, three. 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 Three seats to fill. Mm -hmm. Beverly, Ellen, and Beth. And I kind of thought it would be good. That's why I, I, I thought after looking at the, the session law requirements for the number, it would be good <coughs> then to look at your upcoming vacancies to see where you're losing people from, you know, who fits which definitions, because you'll be down to you'll be down to three for collection of the tax. Um, which is fine, but you might consider. Who, and how is the tell me how has the TEA done that in the past? Uh, come up with suggested new members because the, the TEA don't you bring them to the to the town board? Yeah, come to come to this committee. And but we make suggestions, recommendations, yeah, recommendations, and then final approvals from the town board. Okay, so I mean, I just thought that would be a way to start, you know, that discussion because. Okay, so you're you're down to three members who collect the tax and you're down a couple more, you're down to like <coughs> six or so that are satisfied the three quarters. Who are the ones that collect the tax? Candy. Mike and you. John, you may want to touch about the about the town board about the advertising vacancies. Oh, um, something we'll, we're going to start instead. It has well. been it has been something that the town board has occasionally insisted on the board of aldermen that all vacancies on appointed boards of the town would be advertised not just on the town's website but also through uh, the ads in the local local media. So. I think we'll be doing that. And then we'll work with you about getting the form if that's okay. An application. Sure. So we can have yeah. it better. Yeah, and that's another the, the application we can seek to clarify up front how how the definition is fit, you know, and take that to the town board um, for each of those candidates. Do we have any prospects? Actually, I had a guy with interest, and that was Chris from the Fats Cafe, which is a restaurant. Yeah. It's good. It's just good. Good. So you express the interest. Yeah, and he good. said if we're going to do the application, we'd be happy to go on out. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? So if we did that application, mm -hmm. Well, can I ask a question again? I'm sorry. Yes, Who are we losing from the board? Um, Beverly? Beverly in December. Deb? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Deb, and Ellen. which is in December. And, and then Ellen is already gone. Okay. <clears throat> Doesn't sound like we can be very choosy if anyone's interested in being part of this. Is there a level that we have to maintain as far as seats? We can pull that up in here if you want to. Um, I believe it states it in here. Well, I mean, the, the percentages are, are percentages of however, you know, I mean, it says at least one third of the members shall be. Gotcha. No matter if there's five people on the board or not. Exactly. It'll just get progressively harder to do math, and I already have to take my <laughs> shoes off to get past ten. So I don't, you know. give me both. <laughs> okay. Yes. Do we have the? Uh, yeah. Resolution. Yeah. The. If you look further in your packet, the resolution authorizing the establishment. The. The second. Did for the resolve. Um, Tom Franklin was consistent nine members. 
and then it repeats the uh, one third and two quarters or two fourths. So it is a nine member board. Right. And that's by but that's by act of the, the town board. Yeah. Right. So that, I mean that theoretically could change. Yeah. Because I don't believe the session will have a number. I don't think it does. Let me just check real quick. Here. No, it, it does it's not. not. <coughs> That doesn't provide a specific number. I think they went to nine to try and get one third and three quarters to add up. Add up to 100%. Which has been an issue in the past, especially for accommodations wise, that if finding people that Last one motel where there was a potential. And that's within the city limits. So your limit is only right. Right. Yeah. And if those owners own half of those places and they've already resigned, where do you go from there? Yeah, what it really sounds like is that TDA members need to start beating the bushes in addition to whatever advertising we're going to do. Mm -hmm. That's I know that I can say with absolute confidence that just putting it out there, no matter how you advertise it, media and the town website, is not going to come out of the woodwork. So. so basically, what we're still saying is that we can still suggest different people to be a board member. They'd still have to fill out the application, but then it's still up to the town office and along with the other applications and who they decide to be on the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just yeah, want to make sure everyone's clear on this because I know we've all had questions. These things have changed. So. And that, um, the the uh, staggering of the terms, that was for the initial appointment that no longer yeah. applies. Okay. Although you would, that to me is kind of confusing. Is it going to throw your stagger completely off? No, another thing? we've got, is it okay? We're so spread out now that, uh, and the dates that we don't have the majority of the board going off at one time. Okay. So even appointment of three all at once is not going to throw the stagger into it shouldn't. disarray. Okay. If you look at the dates that we've got now, and then we've got. Three going off on 15. And then 15. Three going off on 14. Um, Those are three on 15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're spread out even in the year. Um, um, so, those are we're spread out enough if we point three people on, on the same day and uh, they'll go out and. Uh, but by the time we do this, it'll be 13 anyway, so we don't go out to 16. And it just hardly ever works out that if you appoint three people at the same time for the same term, that they all serve <coughs> the whole. They don't. Exactly. So it yeah. won't happen. But. Yeah. So, you know, their personal situations. So it's not. It's not going to hurt anything. officers um, we need to talk about the vice chair treasurer and secretary that's something that we have to have to basically have the committees the word treasurer should not appear on there and that's that's my fault because the the towns right town, the towns yeah. Yeah. that's why I was just going to just up. that's force that's force a habit yeah I did that no there is no treasurer right the town takes that position right I think the vice chair is important. Uh, uh, you know, if somebody takes a vacation, that's a chair for the next period. 
the secretary. Should be the vice chair. Yes. And as I understand it, mm -hmm. like I was appointed as a staff person for the town, and some are taking that capacity, so I don't know that there's really a need to appoint a secretary. We looked at, because um, in the, I mean, John, you can help me this if you'd like, with the rules of procedure, you know, it had stated, and I think at one time you guys did this, you <laughs> kind of involved the entire board to let everyone play a role. There was a secretary, you had your vice chair, and um, then of course you had your committees. And it's really, I mean, it seems to the will of the board how they want the board to be made up. Because it's set forth in your rules of procedure. I know I think a lot of uh, some of the duties that had been assumed were basically, you had a, I know at one point in time at the first year you had a lot of vacancies and you just had some members step in to try and fill those roles till we could get to this point that we're at today. Well, we had the committees and then it was like policy procedure. We'd have the person that was chair of that and we'd have a couple people get in with those groups to go over that, the funding and evaluation. Mm -hmm. And to my knowledge, from what I've read, they uh, were elected for a one-year term. And I would think generally you're anybody who's not, I mean, the chair of this board is Six. for a three-year term, and that's by, by appointment by the town board. But I would think any, any other seats like that you do on a yearly basis, usually. I mean, usually any officers on a yearly basis, so <coughs> most things. And I know looking from the past minutes and the past procedures, the way it was set up, I noticed a lot of times, well, Sam, um, the town manager, he served as vice chair just to have the consistency. If you, if the chair wasn't there, you will, for certain, have someone at your meeting because you have a town appointed position. It gives you certainty that that person will be at the meeting. Is that correct, John? Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. to me. <coughs> but there's nothing to dictate that, and it's up. It's up to. It's the up board. to the board, yes. and that's how it needs to be. Is what the board wants. <coughs> so, do we have a vice chair right now? Is that what we're saying? We don't have. We don't okay, everything's <coughs> for real. Mm -hmm. That's sorry. what the retreat is about. Is for discussion to see if we need to make any changes or anything. Mm -hmm. Right, I understand that, but there's no vice chair as it is. No. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. We just have a chair. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when I don't those think are. there's ever been an official appointment by this board. Mm -hmm. In oh, my knowledge, so. <coughs> attending probably 80% of the meetings, I don't think there was ever a, a vice chair or any other <coughs> office. You know, Sam Yeah, he, just, he was just here. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a new, a new authority, so all the rules were new to everyone that was on the board that has been on. I know when I came on, when I took the meetings, but. Basically, we went with what we were told. And that's with every board. You get a new board, you're going to find what you need to revisit, what <coughs> you thought would work at one time that no longer applies. And we wouldn't be voting today anyway. No, we no. can't vote. Mm -hmm. It's just open for discussion and then it would be a, something on so the agenda for next month. The role of, what would be the role of the last year that we feel about town? It's a suggestion, but and I'm also looking back at your bylaws. And yes. The bylaws also don't say what the vice chair does, which is kind of strange. It ought to, I mean, it ought to specify the vice chair chairs the meeting in the absence of the. Well, then we should define that. I'll, that's before yeah. we <laughs> bring back to the, to okay. the board as an amendment. Well, no, in, in four three two it does it provide duties. Oh, I'm sorry. The vice yeah. chairman, unless otherwise determined by the board, shall have in the absence of the chairman perform duties and exercise the powers oh, of the office. Mm -hmm. So the secretary is there, and that's currently what some are taking care of. And the treasurer's position, the town of Franklin finance officer, shall serve as ex officio treasurer for the authority. So there's no way that we can change that. I mean, that's something the town would have to do. So basically what we're looking for. So we've got the, the duties designed defined for each of the officers.
Those numbers come directly from the finance officer. I just provide you, or you Mike, whoever worked at the town provided would those provide numbers that. to the board. Mm -hmm. And that would be something we, the board will continue if that sounds like a reasonable thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? That? Yeah, while we're on that though, um, when's the last time we saw the report? August. Okay. You get one every. You get one every month. And also, on that note, um, everything you got one in August and September. Yeah. Um, remember, there's a month lag. But on our website, I had made a note on this online. Any any time if you go to franklinnc.com, you can find the funding report application. You can find the um, funding um, update when we give uh, funding to an organization. Then they come back and they're supposed to give an update on how their festival or event went. That's online. The rules of procedure, the resolution, resolution authorizing the establishment of the TDA is online. Session law that we just went over, um, that's online. The minutes are online and all the financial reports are online. Good. And there hasn't been any time that they haven't. <coughs> no, um, what I worked with with the finance officer back in July um, remember, there's a lag, so the report you got in, Ju in August was technically July. The report you got in September is technically August. Um, but what I worked with with her was to her preference, how she wanted it to read, to familiarize the board with expenses we still have out there and commitments we've already made. Um, but that's been her, that's the capacity she serves as treasurer. I just relay her reports. Who's that? It seemed like there was a, just a jam. There's a gap there for a while. And, and that's why. Transition she, wise. And or see, I think what? that's where, I think there's been some confusion with this board. From just my looking back at the minutes starting in January, this board's went through a lot of transition within just a year. I mean, it has. And now I think maybe we can all finally get to a place to where everybody can be on the same page. That was the purpose of this retreat. <laughs> So we'll, we'll not be getting, I know mean, when Mike was doing the reports, it was a spreadsheet format. Are we going to get that anymore? Is it, since the it one changed, thing you will start not? getting, um, you'll continue to get what you were given. This, it's not technically a spreadsheet, but you're talking about the comparison. Yeah, from month to month. It, yeah, it the comparison, months. you'll start getting that again. One thing she looked at, her and I looked at revising that was, that was based on a calendar year. And it may be to the preference of the board if you want me to continue to do it on a calendar year or if you want everything to flow within a fiscal year because that's what this board runs on. It needs to be a fiscal year. Yeah. And that was that's just a preference. Uh, I, yeah, and your some budget's of our by a fiscal year. Some of our commitments go through fiscal year. Yeah. So we need that. That's why I did the sheet the way I did it is because then it, it would carry across the fiscal year. And all that was was an informational thing as to how much we've spent for Comcast. Yeah, that's just for, information. You know, for right. our annual it was good information, I thought. Yeah. Well, you'll continue yeah. to get it. It's just, it'll look a little bit different. As far as instead of starting January to December, which we do not run on a calendar year. Right, I've got that. You'll yeah. run, okay, you'll run from July 1st until June 30th on a fiscal year. Okay. But you'll I'm just letting you know November. what was useful just to so me as a board. Yeah, it'll be, it'll Anyone else? See it again in November. Anyone else on the board have an opinion on that matter? Yeah, just so that there's a balance on the projects. In other words, if we, we've got a balance that we're running on for Comcast. We've got a balance that we're running on for Tony Angel. We should at least know how much we've we spent, how much is left to build for us to. Oh, agreed. That's on the finance sheets. <coughs> Any other thoughts? Okay. <coughs> After
application review committee. We're going to need an application review, finance and budget, and policy and procedures committee. Those are all like this. To my knowledge, there were no <coughs> appointments, so that's something else we need to look at. Yeah, normally three, normally three people would be on each committee. Mm -hmm. And one of the people would be like the chair to arrange uh, meetings or whatever discussions. So we had that, but we had so many drop out at the same time, so we basically lost our committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, it's incumbent on me to bring up then that, and it, this also is some, some of what I'm going to talk about, but, but the TDA is a public body, and as such, the any committees of a public body are covered by the open meetings law. Mm -hmm. So that means that, and I don't know if they were doing it before or not, but if you break into those committees, Every one of them's got to give notice of oh, its yeah. meetings. Is that, has that I don't think they've done? had, no. We didn't have any. Did, okay. We basically yeah. didn't. I know they haven't existed in a while, but yeah, anyway. Exactly. But, okay. Just just something to bear in mind. I'm all for, you know, I think I think it will be it will be beneficial to have those committees. But I think the application review committee would be very helpful because, and I think we can cover, I think we're, you're going to touch on that in the funds request procedure. But that's something that would be really helpful for applicants to make that request, just to help guide them through the process. Right. I think it's helpful to the board, it's helpful to the applicant. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's a go-to person for their application. Yeah. They can get that information to them. And it goes to one person because what we're going to get to, speaking of mouths, is going to funds, requests, procedures. Um, What happens a lot of times is that people are doing their grants the week of, and then you're putting all this stuff on the agenda, and no one has time to review it. No one can look back. I mean, no time to review or to find the facts, or if they don't have something filled out right, to go back to them and say, hey, you need to fill this out. This is what we're going to need at our next board so that we can go ahead and vote, so they're not having to wait for a long process. So we need to make sure that we have a time limit and time frame that people get their applications. It has to be in before it can be reviewed. If it's it past their deadline, it's past oh. their deadline. <coughs> and that's something, and maybe you guys can help. If you look at if you look at your request forms, it does say that there's a two month prior. And this is an idea. And this yeah, may have been how you prior. guys were doing it before. Was if you have if you have your chair for the application review committee, you have a chair. You have one entry point to that chair. It could then be the responsibility of that chair to bring that application before the TDA board at the next regular meeting. And at that meeting, at the regular meeting, it would give the board members a chance to hear the presentation from the applicant and take into consideration what the applicant had to say. And then your next slide, the next month at the next regular board meeting you would actually vote on that the town board or excuse me the TDA board actually vote on the request they heard the month before and that kind of spreads it out so you're not jammed half with a week or and it kind of sets the precedent so everybody's on the same page this is but that's just an idea for the board that's how we originally that's how started I, out it originally yes. it seemed that it was set up but somewhere it's fallen yes too many people waited to the last minute Mm -hmm. and would get it in and we tried to help everyone by getting them in and then it just become too much. I mean it was hard to do a great request for none of us know any facts or anything about it and I think that's something that we need to stick to and be firm on. If we're going to do a two month, if we're going to shorten it, I mean it needs to be enough time to review. I agree. I think wherever those funds, fund requests are coming to, whoever's receiving them within the board, I mean, that's to tell them up front, you know, yeah. it's obviously on the application too, it's too much. That's the point of having a committee member that would be the person that they would go to and say, here's your application. They're right. asking for it next month, sorry, you already passed it. I mean, we'd have to throw those out. Not even put it on the right. agenda. Not even look at it. Because... Well, once you we start setting a standard, something. folks will know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, that's the important thing, setting so a standard. everyone Especially okay with the, the two months? I mean, two months' time, people know a function is going to go on way before two months. So they get a chance to come pitch to us. Mm -hmm. 
the funding request, mm -hmm. and then the next month's meeting will vote on it. Right. Okay. Right. Or we could vote on it that evening. No, if you're setting a two month, it's got to be a two month. No, you've got to have the paperwork in. Right. Two months. The application, two months. They won't pitch it until the two next. months, two months after. So we can vote on it that night when they pitch it. Well, we have to have time as a board to review them as that's well. That's correct. That's why they need the two months. Right. That and that's what we're saying. You could make a segment of each meeting <laughs> just a review of, okay, everybody, you've got applications for these four things, and they're right. going to come up next month, so review them. Right. They'll give their pitch that next month, also yeah. at, at the two-month out meeting, which is okay. I mean, I don't care. I think it, it might be fair to applicants because Summer, you and I had talked about make you know having to make a presentation and then wait a month before they get a decision. But that might be. I'm, I'm just thinking that might be too long to ask them to wait to know if they're going to get fund, funding. Yeah. You know. Well, if they're the way uh, most of them come, it's last minute and they're depending on this money, and if they don't get it, then they're angry. So. If they really want it bad enough, they would know way before two months that they need to get the application as soon as possible, get it heard two months prior to the two months that they need it. Then, particularly when the you know two thirds of your funds are supposed to go to advertising, which if you're showing up, you know yeah. for something you're doing next days week, days before, you know, yeah. yeah, there's you know their ads are already done, you know, and we don't reimburse. That's not our job. So, so a timeline on that <coughs> is Joe Blow is having a festival that he wants funded um, six months out. They, he submits the fund request. We review it. Do we, when do we invite him to, to Two come? Months. Two, Two months after, Two months after he submits that fund request. That's correct. Okay. And then we can decide on it that night. Or right. if, there's, if there's other questions that have been brought up that he has been reluctant to answer the, the questions of the application review committee, and he comes expecting to be able to pull his way through, we can say, until these answers are done, which means you submit it for the next meeting, it won't be fun. I mean, that's just, that's so, just the way <coughs> we have to do it. If someone wants money, let's say they're requesting whatever the funds are, in June they're, they're coming, they're filling out whatever they need to fill out, that means by August they'll know there'll be a decision on their request. Two months after, is that right? Does that mean in July we're discussing it? No. Not, no. no. Not until that August meeting. We're you not can discussing review it. it. You can review it, but I don't think we should discuss it until we've married their presentation. And that presentation is not until two months after this That's submission. Right. Right. What if we stagger it? They submit the request too much prior, prior to our decision on it, but they come the next month and do the pitch. So we have a feel for what's going on. Yeah. Submit their application the next month, they do their pitch. Right. Is that what you're saying? And then the following month. Just so we we're not through. left thinking about. I mean, if they submit the fund request, we're just sitting there thinking, what is this festival or whatever it is about, without them having a chance to so they speak would, their case. Let's say about volume, Matt. So we, let's say we have our chair in place for the application review. Okay, and whomever wants to do knows they have an event coming up. Well, two months before that event, they would tell whoever the chair was, hey, this is, I'm going to submit this to you. This is the application. Well, then it would be up to the chair to say, okay, well, within the next regular scheduled TDA meeting, you're going to make your pitch. Mm -hmm. Is that what? That's what I'm getting. Yeah, that makes yeah, but yeah. two months, a month prior. So if they come in the day after a meeting, mm -hmm. they miss the next month, they've got to come the second month. The second month. And then the third month to decide. <coughs> I mean, I'm if lost. we're going to set a deadline. But it's got to be two months prior to a regularly scheduled meeting. I mean, the guy didn't have it in. He, he brought it to me on the 19th day. Guess what? He just lost 30 days. 19th day before the meeting. Think because it's I had a 20. A there's a 20 day lead time in the ordinance. And if he doesn't meet that, he doesn't get the next meeting. He gets the meeting after that. 
So uh, we've got to be clear on, we on what we're doing, month. otherwise we're going to be back to the same, same thing, thing with people walking in the door and expecting an answer that I understand night. That. What was your staggering idea then? I didn't quite follow that. <clears throat> if they put in an um, application. They fill out a fund request. Right. And two months prior to our right. Meet. The, the meeting their two months out. Right. Um, then they come the next month to do their to present it. Okay. And so we have, you know, an idea of what's going on, you know. And then we make a decision the following mm -hmm. the two right. months right. later. And then you come back if they right. want. That's where your but you think about your work. agenda too, because then every month you're going to have reviewing the ones from the month prior plus all the new ones. So your agenda is going to get like this. Well, if they're coming in, because all we're voting, all we're doing is voting in the third month. We're voting, or the second month. Yeah, they've got Plus to get it in. They've ones. got to get in ahead of the meeting day for the clock to start running. Because it's got to be two months prior. They won't get any funding for two months, so it's got to be in ahead of a, a month meeting day. So if they want it, if they want their money in August, they have to have it in us before the June. June meeting. We review it in July. Mm -hmm. Vote on it in August. Makes and sense. They, they make their presentation in July. That's what you might There has to be, they make their presentation that's agendized. The, the votes would be agendized for, for August. And that's all. There's no discussion. It's just a vote. They've had their chance to, to make their speech. We don't need to listen to it again. So basically, if they come in, let's say, I just want to call it, so June, so they come in June, okay, they say, we want to, here's our application for June, <coughs> then they would come, they'd have the opportunity to come to the July meeting to make a pitch, right. and then at the August meeting is when the TDA board would give them a decision. They will. We could have and discussion at the two. July meeting. Right, right. right. While he's been and all well, that's why I was making sure so you don't have all the discussion. Yeah. New and ones the only thing that that August that meeting is just a yay or nay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Exactly. No discussion. And I've had unless, time from my position to right. do right. homework yeah. on yeah. it yeah. and yeah. see yeah. if it's something I want to vote for. But I don't think you want to tie your, the board doesn't need to tie its hands on whether you can have discussion at that second meeting, the, the right. two month meeting out where you are. But if we have, yeah, you're right. Because we're going to have a discussion at that middle month. If he's going to make his presentation that middle month, right, and we have we have questions that he can't answer, then his opportunity will be the next month to answer right. those questions. That's, that's what I meant. And yeah, but only under that condition, right? As if we continue it, continue the discussion to that next meeting, and then we could still act on it and be within the rules. But that'd be the, like your standard condition I, of the board. I mean. I would prefer to have these applications in complete prior to that two-month clock starting to run. Mm -hmm. If their application is not complete, say thank you very much, well, and just the, hand it right back to the chair. Say is we're that not going to discuss this. So that should so already be done. Yeah, yeah, your chair is going to be the key. Mm -hmm. And when they turn in their application, they could say it's not complete. Right. This is what you need to have. We shouldn't be getting it. And we don't even that. put it on the agenda until they, they have it completed. So the, board's they, time. Yeah, the application needs to be answered completely. If they leave the budget off or they don't they don't come up with coherent sentences on what the project consists of. I mean there's a bunch of things there that, that agree. And if it's this is an incomplete and application. And if they're turning it in incomplete but, on that on the deadline day, then then sorry, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But if they're turning it in fault five, six days prior to that deadline day, and this committee it's chair sees, sees that, it, they should help I think it's they our duty to them. probably yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the help part. Right. right. You know, if you had brought this in yesterday, we would have it on our schedule. Um, but because of the fact that you waited this late, and now you didn't, you didn't complete the budget, you don't have a date of your event, you don't have what your request is, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, until we get all that information, A, B, C, and D, we, we can't even consider it. Right. So when you turn this back in, <coughs> we will we will start the clock. So to me, it should be the first of the month because we need on the second Monday of every month. So the first, first it gives them time yeah. to yeah. look at the application, tell them what's wrong with it, yes. or if there is anything, and then present it to be on that agenda for that next week. 
So I would say the first of every month that there are applications no, it won't that be on the agenda for the next week. No. It goes to the subcommittee. Right. But it gives them time before the next meeting that's right. to have their application either fixed they, or not fixed. That's what I say. If they run, if, if it's got to be in two months before a meeting, and they turn it in tomorrow, that won't be heard for three months because the clock doesn't start running until that meeting after they turn it in. I got it. Does everyone else have it? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's just the way it's got to work. If we've got that kind of a deadline, and they turn it in tomorrow, our clock doesn't start running until next month. And then two months after that. The, ne the, the, the next month they talk, the third month we vote. So it needs to be due at the first of the month. Yeah. So deadlines must be prior to the first of the month to start the two, so two months clock. Before the so hypothetically, if a uh, funding request is turned in a day late, two days late, are we just rejecting it? Or are we saying, well, this is no. going to be on the such and such month right. agenda That's correct. down the road? Right. Right. Down the road. We're not just saying here. No, no, no. Back. no, no. Just saying, no. no You're scheduled for blah, blah, blah. Date. Yeah, and it will be scheduled. This is the schedule now because you didn't meet the deadline okay. of the, the application. So that two month clock doesn't start running <clears> until. With our next meeting. Yeah. Okay. And it's up to the chair to keep the schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Let me further complicate things just a little bit. It's brains are in What are you gonna do? Shouldn't I think the the T V A ought to go ahead and set some sort of policy about what it's gonna do with the folks that say, Oh, I did I had to miss that my pitch. I've missed my pitch, but I'm back here for my second meeting. I still want my funds. Are they just out? Are they, what are you going to do with it? Well, if their application is in and they don't yeah. come to a presentation, we look at what we have and we go by that. We don't go by a presentation. I mean, we're not going to prolong it for six months. No. <laughs> they can have a representative come to forum. I mean, if they really need the funding. We've got all the information. If they really want it bad enough, they're going to get it in sure. on time and sure. they're going to come yeah, and sure. There are groups that we don't need to sit here and listen to 14 years of past experience. Well, this we brings get, up another point. There's we need to group, have a deadline. There's one group that gives us a notebook every time <laughs> that's got a complete history of the event. I mean, we don't need to know what they're doing hour by hour. Well, I mean, we don't need to spend an hour listening to that. Mm -hmm. you know, no. We know what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, we can act off the paperwork. They don't need to come do that. Well, their presentation needs to be limited. We said five yeah. minutes in the yeah. past. That's, that's Is there a time that. limit? Yeah. Yes. Right now? It's to be. There needs it's to be, to or be you're going to be here for 9.30, 10 o'clock. Yeah. We have been before. There is a time limit, but it's just not enforced. Yeah. That needs to be enforced. Okay. Okay. I wanted to set a timer before. When it takes, you got to quit talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can be rude and then be put in. <laughs> but we could put a time limit on the form, too. That was we did. the thing I was going to end. I just disagree with, I mean, if they've done this such and such thing for 14 years in a row, I think they still need to come state their case. And how are what's going, what, how are you doing things new? Are you doing anything new with this event? Yeah. Well, that to, should be on the application. To promote tourism, et cetera. It's on their application. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, they can just expand on that, too. I mean. So you're saying well, then you should do it within a certain time. Right. Yeah. I just don't think we should. Uh, someone submits a fund request, we just don't say, "Oh, you don't have to come." Oh. oh no, 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 no. But we've never. We're not saying if they don't, they didn't personally show up. Right. Okay. I don't think there's been anyone that didn't show up for their fund request. Well, there have been a few, yeah. and because of, the, I think because of the, what they submitted, we said sorry. There have been a couple. And they're not there to explain it. Does that is what about time limit? You guys feel comfortable with if we start enforcing five, eight, ten? Two. It's five and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I think five. I sounds think five. Five. Plenty of time. Okay. Sure. 
most people would do a presentation within five minutes or shorter. I mean, if they want to Probably do it for two, more power to them, yeah. but if they've yeah. got five. <laughs> yeah. And if they've done a good enough job on it, they could, they can keep it the five. If they've done a good enough job on what we're reading. Mm -hmm. And our question should be And will they have that information that will know that they have? It'll be on that. Be on yeah. right. And to me, that'd be for the chair just to remind when they go over and say, yeah. okay, just remember these key things right. in the application. Okay. And we have to carry a little buzzer if you want it goes off in five minutes. So we'll just because <laughs> it's hard to be rude to people sometimes yeah, and cut them off in the sense. middle. But yeah. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it gets lighter. Like and I think yeah. that's the problem. Yeah, I mean, it's really and that should be listed on here. Yeah, it needs to be. And, and the application the review committee one chair should be the administrator <laughs> of that time yeah. limit. That's what, that's what yeah. I said. If we need a little time, yeah. I want. And before they make their presentation, you know, mm -hmm. just to remind you. Friendly you know, reminder. Yeah. 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 Or less. <laughs> and having well, said all, all this <laughs> and this, you know, this stuff we're going to put forth, I think it's our, our job to <coughs> communicate that with our community. Mm -hmm. How, what are ways we can do that? Um, press releases. Um, communicate. Website. To change to the procedure. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Just oh. to, to clear the smoke how do you how do you come approach the TDA board well, I think procedurally since you really can't I think you need to have a new procedure a new form that, that summer is going to going to make or summer are you going to do it somewhere? I'll do it she's going to make the adjustments to the form and bring it back to the TDA at your next regular meeting to approve it because again can't you can't approve meeting. you can't really vote on anything in a retreat That's <coughs> just for discussion um, once you've done that, it could be it'd be put in place, and then we could put a notice on the website too, where they where yeah. we send them to pick up their application. Yeah, do the contact. Yeah. But you get where I'm, where I'm yeah. getting oh. at. I mean, but you could also do. There seems to be a lot of folks confused about funding from the TDA in, in Franklin. Yeah. Am I alone in saying that? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, the more we do on yeah. our end, communicate that to you know. I think we've communicated really well in the past few months. It's been in the papers. Right, but not specifically. Here's our funding request. This is how. This is who we're giving money to. This is why. That sort of thing. I don't know. It just helps us out in the long run. I, I think. And it's on the website, though, right? The website's being updated, and things are. Added well, currently, it, it, the funding request the forms website. on the website. But those I mean, we can put but not those have been on there. Yeah. yeah. Everything that you said has been. It's been on there. So years. Too. You can pull up every meeting, actually, because I had to pull up mm -hmm. some the past yeah, ones. It's got a minute to long. And minutes are there, so if you want to look back at the flavor of what's going on, you can, you can go through the minutes. I think it's already listed all the way from when it started. So there's still a there's a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been it's well over here. <coughs> and they're all listed. Yeah. So we just have to pull it up. Mm -hmm. um, so while Summer's doing a new form, you also have to decide, is it sort of the, the, the will of the board to add a, an insurance requirement? Yeah, is that something you want to see in your new form? I think, I think generally most everybody who comes before you for a funding request needs to add the TDA in the town as an additional insurance. In the same kind of way that we've dealt with here recently, I don't think it's hard to do. I don't think, you know, for, for most applicants. There are a few, and I kind of wrestle with this too. That they're not. You're going to make it much harder on things like the, um, the Appalachian Trail group who came in here, and they. It's an un, you know, it's an unincorporated un. I think they're uninsured. No, they were insured. Or were they insured? Yeah, That's right. Okay. They were. Well, then yeah, I think you ought to were. just blanket require it of everybody. Mm -hmm. and if they're maintaining the trail and somebody trips, that's a that's a suit out for them. I know. And you and that's the problem really with those smallest ones is you might have bought a lawsuit for five hundred dollars of funding that you've done. You know, and we just it, it would be best to just yeah. just require it of all applicants that so they that get it needs to be on the application. Right. right. And I I'll, I'll work with you if that's okay with that. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And also we need to we need to talk about review of those because as we've also seen, it's possible to get coverage for something that has nothing to do with what they've come to you for funding for and include the town and TDA in that coverage and it's not going to do us any good. So we need to, 
talk, we need to just work on it, so. Okay. Yeah. So we're certainly covered. Right. Going to be. <laughs> well, and I'm also, I've continued to work with, and I've got to check back and with the town's insurer, we've been working through Y insurance to make it clear that the TA and, and each of you are covered as as officials, sort of public officials coverage. Um, it wasn't clear on the town's policy before, but we're gonna we're gonna get it clarified to make sure. That being said, I, I would still want you to get as much coverage as you can and get special events and co uh, coverage for all of your applicants. before we vote on anything else. I think it'll make it part of the application, and so that's another check that they're going to have to be able to, to mark off for you. And I can bring yeah, that well, to the board at the November meeting. Okay. I'll work with John, and when we come in November, I'll have the application for y'all to say, this is what we've discussed. What do you guys think before we go for it? Will they be attaching? And will they just be writing down that they're insured with so and so or whatever? Yeah, they or they be yeah. attaching? Yeah. Yeah. We need the certificate okay. that shows yeah, also, sure. also insured. But right. see, not being insurance people, just to bring up the bike rally, when looking at insurance prior, that's how I noticed that something was wrong. And then we took it to John to have a review it. So none of us are insurance people, so I think that maybe that needs. Or every month, someone's going to take. Well, that gives us two months to at least get it to him to make sure right. that it's, I mean, it's not. A, it's not a complicated thing to review, and I don't mind to do it. I don't, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can look at, at the. Generally, it's in the bottom left. Sure. Right, and I form. do the town's so insurance policy. Also. I work with that, so I mean, I could glance over it, and if I had any questions, I'd be glad to address it with the town attorney. Yeah, especially if the name on the policy and the name on the application don't match. <laughs> I'd be a red flag or two. Yeah. <laughs> as long as I'm covered before I vote on anything else. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I don't want to vote on anything else uh, until I'm covered. I don't, believe you. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing here now. Yeah, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. The ceiling doesn't fall. <laughs> Any more comments? current forms that we do now? That's in the packet, um, and that's what we briefly kind of went over this way. Everybody can be familiar. Um, that's the funds request, and then also the project report, which is after. Um, I know in the past, the TDA has requested any time they've given funding to organization or an event, that that event will organization come back after the event and give the TDA board an update on success, not so successful. Um, the other sheet that you guys um, will have in there is the contract. Um, that's something that I've kind of, and Mike would have done before, we'll see about the contract. Anytime the TDA grants funds to an organization, the organization has to agree to enter to a contract with the TDA board. Um, you have to have a signature from the organiza organization, the president or whomever is the head of that organization. Plus, you have to have the TDA chair sign off on it, and our town finance officer has to sign on it. Um, that's then attached with their grant request and the minutes from the board meeting that approve that funding. But this just kind of gives you guys an idea of what. Is that different from the one in the book? Why is the, the loose one? There's one in the book. So it should be different. I didn't know if you guys had that or not, so I made an extra. Okay. So everyone has a copy. Yeah, everybody should have a copy. <laughs> But that's just information for everybody to have. So when we do approve a grant, we'll have them sign these so that we can get it all yeah, in. They should sign it that, that, that night. Well, and I, I'm going to review that contract <coughs> yeah. as well, and, and I'll probably bring back to you an updated. Uh, well, one of the things to add would be the fact that they have to carry us as a insurer. Exactly. I think that and they're. I, and here's something else that I think needs to be in the contract, but maybe also in the application is safety, any kind of safety control measures they're going to have to have. Mm -hmm. uh, traffic or safety issues you want addressed? Is that, or is that something that's just got to be done? It on depends, on what they're, depends on what they're looking for, because we could fund, we could fund, for instance, uh, 
pumpkin fest. And they closed the street, and that's approved by the town board. So those safety issues in regards to that street right. closing is out of our hands. Right. And yeah. we shouldn't be the arbiter of that. That's and between the town and the police department. We shouldn't be even into that. I don't even ask. Right. Because if they're going to close the street, mm -hmm. then they've got to get higher permission than us to do that. Mm -hmm. And at that point, if, if they don't, the police don't like what their plans are, then they'll have to modify their plans to get the board approved. So I don't, I don't think we should even be there. <coughs> and I don't even want to no, imply that we're giving them permission to do that. Right. right. <coughs> Funding reports. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen one. And they're available. Oh no, I know what they look like. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I haven't seen one filled well, out. Still well, I've, I've given some mm -hmm. out when I was here, mm -hmm. the, because if we fund, if we just are writing them a check, then they they're required to do that. If we're just providing bulletin board space for them, we don't do it for the billboards. It, you know, there's no no funding to really change the answer. And see, all it is, if you look at the report, it's not technically a report. It's just saying the name of the organization, and then it gives up what, instead of writing it in, they basically, like, for an example, the motorcycle rally. She came and gave a presentation before the board on her success, what didn't maybe go well, what did go well. It's just more of a general concept. So why is it there, though? I mean, if they're if they're just going to come well, and do a presentation. The board probably needs to know why they're coming back to give an update. Well, there's there's financial results that they're supposed to show mm -hmm. how they how it turned out. Like the numbers. And, and then their mm -hmm. their plus they're list and delta list. And see, is, that's what they would do different. Yeah, right, but what, I they, seen what they what they did out. well, what they didn't. Well, we've do not well. had one. We've been just yes. funding advertisement. Yes. We've not been giving out money. Funding. Yeah, money for yeah. just funds to Since pay I've been on this board, things. we have it? Advertisement I'm, I'm funds. I'm telling you, I know I've handed you one. I've given you copies, Matt, because we've had them when I've done it. Linda, Linda, uh, from Main one. Street. And we've we actually got one that'll be coming next month that I got today that you'll see in November from the Folk Festival. That's great. I'm just saying what I haven't <laughs> seen. We may need to check your email address because you've not been seeing a lot. <laughs> Interesting. I've, I've handed them out of the names when I was, when I I was sitting over there. They don't know they don't know each other since I'm here. It's too bad. I haven't seen any. We haven't done any months or so, yeah. four months. Yeah. So we haven't had any. So I'm an advertising. Right. But you'll see one next month. That'll be the first. Because see, you got to think the folk festival that was back <coughs> in February. But see, they come before the board yeah, in February. But in February. There's yeah, yeah. Their event is in June. June, and, and then, then until they get their account month. closed out, right. they don't have anything. Yeah. Yeah. It won't be something. For the month prior, mm -hmm. for any event that has took place, because they still have to pay out bills. I know that it's still things going on with the the bike. <coughs> sure. She's not completely closed down. Okay. Any other discussion on that? <coughs> yeah, I got one more thing. Okay. Um, even though we're handing out money for advertisement through billboards or whatever, are we not? We don't don't need to know. How that event went, et cetera. Or we just. I mean, that's something that we can start asking for. I mean, if we wanted them. But here again, this is where um, if we're funding advertisement, then we need to know statistics, I guess, on if that helped them or not. I mean, not just their whole event itself. If we were funding their event, I would. Well, think if the event's good. successful, you know, I mean, to a certain extent, just a generalization. Mm -hmm. um, we know that that you know, may have had a, a role in it, and, uh, apart from just going, well, here's money for billboard. Mm 
You can I have think the bill. It would board. be interesting. Whether See, we it's don't ne consider necessary or not. I think it's just interesting. Like, like I funded did. the gun show. You know, that how many people a, did you have? Yeah. And uh, did you have more? If we're not doing that, then I, I don't know Let's see we, what we're doing. The then last, we need to put it as a requirement. At the last yeah. meeting, if you remember what we did, uh, we we funded advertising, provided they bill the town directly, mm -hmm. which means that the TDA is paying that bill. Not We're not handing them cash. So well, at that point, there's no sense for a form. There's no sense to right. do that. I'm just, you're missing my he point, He just wants them to come back and I want to know how the event went. Event. Okay. If I'm well, voting I mean, yes, you to say here, those, here's billboards. Then, if you want those, that's that's fine. I mean, that's. I just that's think it would be interesting information yeah. to have. Sure. It, is the event growing from year to year? Something like that. Sure. What demographics did you bring in? Yeah. That's true. I just think it'd be interesting. It can be a requirement on the application. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the board wants. Yeah. come for it again. Mm -hmm. I mean. So the committee's going to be responsible for making sure that those that didn't, we keep a lot of that. Well, don't you think the funding and evaluation chair, if they're going to help them with the application, you could then mentor them afterwards yeah. to, you know, or, or talk directly with them to make up that report? Yeah. And a report would be fine without just coming back and speaking. Mm -hmm. just that would be yeah, your chair would say I've got an update I spoke with the Nana Halo Hiking Club. That's one that we gave strict advertising to and say this is what I discussed and this is what we found out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. The report's standard issue. Whether you want to come and do a special presentation is fine. Yeah. But the report has to be done. Yeah, it's a project report, so mm -hmm. it wouldn't be and we can put in the application. And no, it's just it's check to see what it was labeled. If it was mm -hmm. funding report, yeah. but it's labeled project report, so for, for any project. So, so the consequences would be that you would not be well, just qualify a, for another application next year if you don't. Or just uh, affects your, just your, your our view of it. Yeah. You know, whether we vote for it or not. I don't know if it automatically negates it. Any more questions? Okay, I'm going to move on to the legal review. John, if you want. Um, for some of you, this will be a true review, and some of you may not have heard any of this before, and some of you are leaving the board and may be doing this again in a couple of months. But anyway, um, this the TDA is in the in, within the meaning of, of state law a, uh, a public body, and as such. There are several different laws that apply to it um, that apply to every other public body, the, the town, the county, the school board, the, you know, everything like that. Um, one of those is the open meetings law. And generally, the gist of the open meetings law is that if an elected body is going to act it or deliberate, and I'll get into that some more, it needs to do so in a either a regular or a properly called special meeting um, or an emergency meeting and I'll touch on that but uh, essentially that's when and where you need to do the business of the TDA and no, not anywhere else um, like I said you will you have regular meetings and I guess it's a little different with yours because the TDA bylaws say the meetings are at the call of the chair um, but if you establish a you know, a regular meeting schedule, then that's, that's going to be the regular meetings. Have you done that on a yearly basis? Mm -hmm. Establish reg the regular meetings. Um, call meetings, uh, you all know they can only be called with 48 hours notice to, to the press. 72 in our bylaws. Yeah. It was 72 in the bylaws, so it's even more. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Uh, and then there are emergency meetings, but I don't know that you're you probably don't need to worry about them. I don't know that the TDA is ever going to have an emergency. Um, so like I say, the law applying to the TDA is that 
all your decisions and deliberations need to be uh, in a regular or called meeting. Um, a public body, there, there's a limited list of exceptions to the open meetings law that lets you go into closed sessions and discuss certain things. I don't know how any of them would ever apply to the TDA. Um, maybe attorney-client privilege. Uh, I think that I could consult with you as a town attorney, but even then it's only going to be in the context of a lawsuit or, or a threatened one. So we'll know when we get to that, uh, it, but it's probably never going to happen. Um, so, and let me touch a little bit on deliberations. Deliberations means even if you just feel like you're receiving information as a TEA member and you're not going to act on it, it needs to be in a meeting. And you, you need to not, um, the, the, the majority of this board cannot get together outside of a call or regular meeting and even just get information about something. As individuals, you can do that all you want to. Uh, and go go talk to people, go talk to event organizers, and gather whatever information you feel like you need. But if a majority of this board ever did that, even just again, just to hear somebody out, we've we've got an open meetings violation. Um, that sort of either discussion of an issue or gathering of information also extends to other means like phone calls and emails. Um, if a majority of this board got together and talked on a, you know, on a conference call and it's not been properly called as a meeting, we've also got an, an open meetings violation. And the same thing goes for email. If you are going to get, start discussing by email in any given topic that is TDA business. I would clarify that for a second. It's got, it only applies to TDA business. So you could all, you could start an email now and discuss, you know, the latest movies out and it's not TDA business anyway and it's not, <coughs> that's fine, but you can't discuss the business of the TDA by email or phone call or whatever if it's, if it's not been um, properly called for the public to, to have the opportunity to, to see it go on. Um, while we're talking about emails, that kind of leads into the next big thing that I need you to know applies to the TDA, and that is the public records law. Um, the public records law pretty broadly defines what is a public record. Uh, it's pretty much anything that a public body creates or receives in the transaction of its business. There are limited exceptions, and just like with the open meetings law, I don't know how any of them are ever going to apply to the TDA. So you should just assume anything you get or send out as part of TDA business is a public document. It, and so what's the consequence of it being a public record? Uh, one, you have a duty to preserve it. You can't, in any emails you get, you should delete. You should, should delete, should not delete. You should preserve uh, in addition to other documents. Um, and that's part of the function of these, these notebooks is going to be you can know all your TDA you know, materials are right there. Um, public documents are all open to, to inspection by anyone at any time and uh, there's specific case law that says you can't, we the, we, the government, the public body, can't even ask why they want to see a given thing. It's just open it to inspection or provide copies or both and, and no questions asked. Um, so there are several things, um, like I say, emails present a special challenge for both open meetings and public records. Um, they pertain to them in particular. Like I say, don't delete them. You also don't want to write anything in them that you wouldn't take outside and post on a, on a lamppost because they are essentially that open. Um, that rule applies to, and this may, I don't know that it's a terrible idea to have a separate email account, but I'm not going to tell you you have to. I don't believe it's the law that you have to keep a separate email account. Um, but the public records part of this definitely applies to emails that you send and receive through your personal email accounts. 
Um, it doesn't make your entire personal email account subject to, to inspection or disclosure or uh, copying or anything like that. But, uh, but those emails that you have that are TDA business are definitely public records and, again, are, are open to inspection. Um, there's a, a request pending that some of you I don't have copies from and I'll, I'll have to get with you about who I'm, I lack emails from at this point. Um, again, don't deliberate, you shouldn't deliberate via email anyway. So um, just that, that should be avoided at all costs at any rate. Um, and I will just touch on attorney-client privilege. I sincerely doubt that we're going to have anything come up that will allow you to have attorney-client privilege, but you need to know that there's case law that says when I send something to a client who's a public body that is legal advice, it's privileged. But that's not a two-way street. So the things that are sent back to me, even if they're legal questions and contain things that we'd rather keep privileged, are not necessarily uh, privileged as uh, in respects to the public records law. So I know that's a lot in a very short period of time and kind of complicated and convoluted. Um, it's my livelihood that it is complicated and convoluted, but I'm happy to answer any questions you've got. I have a question. Um, you said a majority of the members, let's say if we're getting, let's say some, the businesses are street fast or whatever, and I'm down there and I see Matt and I start talking about something, mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. Talking TDA, not just... If, if, if two members want to discuss something that is TDA business, that's fine. But if you went from Matt and then you talked to Summer and then, then you Katie talked to Mike... And, and then now we've got a majority... If you went and discussed it, just it. one person to one person, one person to a majority of the board had talked about it, it's a problem. And that's the okay. kind... That, yeah. It needs majority. to be in an okay. open meeting. Yeah, and if, if three people get together with discussing that's a majority of a quorum, mm -hmm. that's also a violation. Right. If they sit down and they're out having dinner or something and they, right. they start talking TDA business, right. then that violates the open meeting. Mm -hmm. so. And I'm not, you know, you, you shouldn't shun Matt in public because he's on the TDA with you. Um, <laughs> it, it, it is perfectly permissible for any members to get together and do things that aren't TDA business. You know, you, again, like the, using the movies as an example, you could all go drive and watch a movie together right now, and as long as you didn't discuss TDA business, it's fine. Okay, but what about polling? Polling is not, um, polling is not technically envisaged by the, the open meetings law. Um, mm -hmm. Every governmental client that I have does it though. Sometimes sometimes you just can't effectively function without immediate action that you can't always call a meeting and have have the vote taken. But ideally it would only be done on matters that had already been deliberated and you're only waiting for like say you're waiting for the insurance coverage to be verified. And then, you know, everybody said, I'm going to be for this as long as they get insurance coverage in place. Then I think it's okay to poll. But. You think it's okay. Or but. It is okay. The result of that poll has to be voted on. Yes. Discussed yeah. at the next regular meeting. So right. you can't just. You bring and ratify it at the, at yeah, the next meeting. you got to ratify it at the next meeting. It's something we try to avoid. Sometimes it can't be avoided. But we try to avoid it if at all possible. Or if another board member calls a special call meeting and they had one, do we know about that? Do we not know about that? Or? Um, a call meeting of like the TDA? Mm -hmm. I don't think they could. I mean, unless everybody gets notice of it, it's not been properly called. And it's not an official meeting. So you could have an illegal meeting happen that way. And that's... Again, what we need we're to, talking about yeah, we need yeah. to avoid that. But, yeah. So in essence, the chair is the only person that can call a special meeting. If that's the case, <coughs> then how are you? How are? How is anyone else? I forget. Is there going to be able to to call a special meeting? There's a minimum with a request of five or more board members. So, so you have to have a majority. How, how do you, do you get that? that? 
What do you mean how do you get it? How do you get the you mean how, how do you communicate with, with the other board open members? meetings law? Um, st strictly speaking, the time the the time that you're going to get together and discuss the time that you're going to get together and have a call meeting is not TDA business per se. I mean, I think that you can you could communicate among that number of the board to say we need to call a meeting mm -hmm. and request it to be called. I mean, it's it's specifically you know provided for in the bylaws. You just couldn't then also say, here's why we need to have this meeting and this is, you know, we're, we, we need to reconsider this funding matter or we need to turn this one down or, you know, something along those lines. Then then you're deliberating an, an issue that needs to be an open session. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So if Matt wanted to call a special meeting, special call meeting, and he emails, let's say summer, mm -hmm. Doesn't he have to tell her why he wants to call? I think he can, he can tell the, the subject, subject, but don't yeah. get, go into it. Exactly. Right. But then it, there's got to be five people. And really, you need to give the subject of, an, of a, a called meeting because it's not going to be just generally the right. business of the board. It's one, okay. one thing we're getting yeah. to discuss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't do anything other than that, the right. reason for okay. the call meeting. So if, this, if the members of this board were going to call a meeting, it does need to be, I mean, you're going to have to discuss it's, right. you know, majority of us want okay. to want to have a call meeting on this topic, and that's how you do it. Yeah. And there's got to be five people that are in accordance with that. Otherwise, the meeting, the meeting won't be called. Right. I'm sorry, say that again. You, have, you have to have five people that call <coughs> someone and say we've got to have a meeting. Oh, okay. Sure. And it's got to be the sure. same subject. Right. And that requires notice, posting, and everything, 72 right. hours in advance. Mm -hmm. So you can't have a call meeting. And then have it that evening. Right. Okay. Okay. You have you got to have 72 hour notice. And you've got to let everybody know what that means. Okay. Any other questions on that? <coughs> um, it, it's under the legal review of the discuss, discussion of the role of chief operating officer. It's not a legal issue per se, but this is more of a it's more of a TDA procedures uh, discussion. The chief operating officer is is out is named in or or created by the bylaws in Article 7. Uh, yeah, it's undefined. It is completely undefined. I don't know what it is or what it does. Mm -hmm. Well, at that point, it was me. I mean, were you, what were you doing? I was taking minutes and <laughs> doing reports and, you know, it's all the, all the administrative paperwork of the organization. And is that not what a secretary I mean, what, did the, what was the secretary doing? He liked the title. We didn't the time he didn't have one. Somehow got moved. Yeah. And I didn't put the title yeah. in here. This was done before I got appointed to the job. Yeah. So. I mean, because it seems to me that the, the majority of what you were doing as the COO, Mike, is, a, is what the secretary would do. And yeah. I do think you, a secretary is created by the bylaws and ought to be appointed uh, by the TDA. Um, so I, I think maybe what that COO could do is maybe be amended to be, be like the, I don't know, I know Sam was acting, Sam Greenwood was acting as the, the liaison to the town board. Right. Is that maybe more along the lines of what that person's going to do with the COO? Well, that's, that's when I got assigned as a staff person to take care of the minutes and you know, deal with was the paperwork on those, and that's what I got assigned to do. Was the was all the paperwork. But then, did was anybody ever designated to be the liaison to the board of aldermen? Was no, that just something that, that, that was something that Sam said? Okay, then. Once. I mean, it's in there under it, seven point one says manager, and there's it makes sense that a representative from the town who's on the TDA board would be that person to to bring TDA issues like 
I you did. know, nominees for reappointment. And I did. Yeah. I did all of that stuff, yeah. and, and, I, and I put the minutes, sent the minutes to every board member, mm -hmm. every town board member, every month. It, it talks about a quarterly report in there, mm -hmm. but the quarterly report would only be stapling three months of minutes together yeah. and send them to the board. Mm -hmm. So I sent them every month. So it's in spite of what somebody says, we're not getting reports. They were getting reports. He was getting the minutes, the minute they were approved, the next morning. Whether they were looking at them or reading them. Well, that's, them. that's their problem. Mm -hmm. But they were sent, the minutes of the meeting were sent out. So, I mean, I think year. I would just suggest that you consider a bylaw amendment to clarify what that COO does if you, you know. Is that something you might, could, should we let? draft and bring back yeah. at the November. Yeah. Because <clears throat> basically one that's what I don't know how much that Sam discussed with you, but that mm -hmm. was that was what I was doing and that's basically what Summer's been doing. And then that's what basically Summer's been doing is but now she's appointed as a voting member. Right. So um, I wasn't a voting member at that time. It was just a, but now I think we're at the point where do you want to have, when we talked about those offices that we need to look at, do you want to do a secretary? You know, do we want to look at doing that now because we're kind of at the base? We need to look at other officers or do we want to keep going like we're going? And that needs to. Well, yeah, and I, I'll just throw this out for what it's worth. I mean, someone's getting paid by the town to do this work. If somebody else gets appointed, that's on their dime. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why I said that. That's that why I, I, I'm not sure we need to, need to appoint a secretary mm -hmm. because that's being done by this chief operating officer, and that's that was my thought in that is that that's okay. that's well, part of her work duties. Well, what we could put in there is that if. <laughs> If it's assigned, the, the duty of the secretary could be assigned to the, the chief <coughs> officer. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because then that all we need is a, is a uh, vice, vice chair, right. definite vice chair. Because if, if in the event that, that Candy couldn't be there or somebody wasn't designated to, to uh, run the meeting, you know, then technically what we have to do is we have to elect somebody to chair the meeting at each meeting. Right. So, you know, at that point, it'd be better to have a designated person that just automatically step into that role. I'll be back with a, a bylaw change for yeah. that. Yeah. And the, the only other thing I had, I think you covered already, the blanket insurance insurance requirement. Is there any questions? Okay. Moving on to finances. Okay, so I'm going to oh, review the budgeting that. process. We've kind of covered, um, and Mike, please feel free to chime in. You know more about this than I do right currently. Each year, like I was explaining earlier, the town runs on a fiscal year, which is July the 1st to June 30th of each year. Our fiscal year started July 2012 and will end in June 30th, 2013. The town board adopted the town manager when he when we when the town board adopted the budget at the May meeting at the board of aldermen. The town manager had budgeted uh, for the TDA 100,000 and that's just a predicted revenue of what the is set aside in the town budget. Um, one thing, and this kind of skips on to item C, we need to discuss, and Mike can maybe chime in a little bit on this, is the reserve. Um, to my knowledge, I know there was a, a vote taken, I guess a couple years ago, about the, to set 25% of the monthly um, collections to set aside in a reserve. Now this is my question for the board. What I've been doing with the financial statements, the report that you receive shows 
what we've what they've taken what you guys have taken in and cleared if you will for that month is would you do you want to see on a separate sheet because the two the two items are separate on a separate sheet what we could do is put how much you have in that reserve and that I've just been kind of for the past two months you know right now we have about 89,000 but that's something that needs to be addressed separately you don't need to mix I think there's some confusion when you have a financial statement and you have if someone doesn't understand the concept of the reserve it almost looks like you have more than you technically yes. do mm -hmm. so we need to make a distinction so everyone's on the same page and I'm willing to do that but that's why I've tried to separate them because it's a whole different ball field with the reserve and there, there's a couple things that we need to consider in this process too because putting money away to create a reserve you can't do that forever mm -hmm. we should set a limit on that and I, I would suggest since we're getting very close to it a year's operating expense uh, would be a hundred thousand dollars or a year's income would be a hundred thousand dollars and I think that should probably be discussed at our November meeting and I would suggest that we limit that reserve fund and stop putting money into it once we hit a hundred thousand dollars because I mean mm -hmm. that exposes us yeah. that exposes us to why do you need a three percent tax if you're gonna right. keep right. squirreling money away right. so at this point I don't think I think a logical number would be one years um, the counties and the towns have um, what do you call them John the uh, the funds where they they've got to have eight percent reserve or the you um, know, fund, I, balance. I, fund balance yeah. Well, that's basically what we're looking at is, is our reserve. And we hit a big number of 25% to, to build that up fairly quickly. So it's taken us three, four years to reach the number we've got now. And um, at that point, I think we need to, we need to shut that off at, at, at what we estimate as being 100,000. Also, the budgeting, the TDA wasn't necessarily involved in the budget because of the fact that we we know what we're expending every year that's part of the minutes uh, we know roughly what our income is or we could guesstimate what our income is and we've been pretty close I don't think we I think we've actually gotten more than we've estimated in the past and we have to amend the budget because of our spending um, so I, you know, I was comfortable with a hundred thousand that Sam said to put in. And as a matter of fact, he asked me at one point, where are we at on funding? Um, how much have we gotten in so far? And, and we were approaching a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So I figured, okay, last year's budget I think was ninety. Ninety. This year. Um, this year it's a hundred based on that because we, that's what our anticipated income was been. We can't really spend any more than our anticipated income without amending the budget, but we can because we've got this reserve fund. So we can draw from that if we need to if we need to go over what we anticipate. But you need to look at them almost as two separate There's yeah, two pools. separate two separate pools. Mm -hmm. We're trying to stay within our budget of a hundred thousand dollars a year. And this hundred thousand is our is our savings account that only needs to happen in case of disaster or major purchase, mm -hmm. you know, major purchase requirements. So I, you know, and we're in, as I reported to the paper in the last thing, or mentioned in the last meeting, I mean, we're in, we're in pretty good shape here. We're not, we're not running over budget, or, mm -hmm. you know, so, and we've got this reserve. Well, right, well, we should be. So I think, um, I think once we, you know, we look at that, I think, it would be a good suggestion to cap that. And we could do that at the November meeting. Jack can provide the wording that we need to have in the If you were talking about a bylaw amend amendment to, yes, to add to that in. Well, I don't know, do you need a bylaw amendment or is that just a policy? Well, I don't know. If it's a policy, it's subject to change at any time by future boards. And if you're gonna make it the, if, if your intent is that the TDA without a I mean, not that the bylaws are subject to change, but if it's going to be the ongoing practice for the 
foreseeable future by the TDA that that you keep this reserve and it's at a hundred thousand and you know all the details that you're talking about I'd put it in the bylaws okay we could talk about having a reserve funding but don't specify amounts don't specify dates that we we have authorized ourselves to do this and we should that would be the only thing that how do you how do you mean that is it going to I mean, we don't we 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 can put in there a reserve fund of no more than a hundred thousand dollars or one year's. We could put in. I think one year's, one year's yeah. budget. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, one year's budget. Yeah, but it doesn't need necessarily need to be something that we keep adding money into. Right. Forever. I mean, when I when I heard it was eighty nine thousand, it was at. like, oh God, we got to stop. Yeah, this. we got to stop. Well, to be honest, when I started on the board, it was 25% to be put back, not that it was coming out monthly. I think the impression that we were under that it was for the year, 25% of the yearly income. It was 25%, well, that's what not 25% per month. Yeah, so I heard the, earlier it was per month. Well, it's 25% per month. It, it doesn't matter. It's the end of the year. At the end of the year, it's the same number. But the the... The issue is it's easier to do monthly on a monthly basis than it is than it is uh, you know at, at the end of the year after spending that we take 25 percent of what we earn, what we brought in that's a tough thing to do right. yeah. you know unless you're looking for a tax break at the end of the year right. nobody throws money <laughs> out at, at the end of the year right at the last minute so we, we did it monthly which then forced us to stay within a, a much narrower budget limit. I understand some people have been under the impression that for the TEA to touch those reserve funds, it would have to be some process of approval by the Board of Alder. No. I don't know where that came from, and I don't believe it's true. I don't, I don't know of any provision in no. local ordinance or the session law or anything that Set, that tells the TDA that you have to do that. So it's, it's, no. I don't think that's right. It's a discretion of this board. I'm going to specify then in that bylaw okay. amendment that Good. it's yeah. by vote of the. Do you want it to be a some kind of super majority vote to to invade the reserve fund? I think it should be. I think it should be unanimous. Yeah, it should. Yeah. We can make it unanimous, unanimous or super okay. majority. Yeah. Does everybody agree? Yeah. Uh, let's just in case I mean in case this board winds up with seven people with filling vacancies and everything like that we can't we can't make it a nine nine person vote so we've got to have the, the seating seated members or some I was just gonna say I was just gonna say unanimous I try to stay away from that specified number okay. thing it doesn't but I mean the unanimous of the members not the members present, but unanimous in the seat of members. Right. So if we've got two vacancies, they don't count in that vote. Right. Um, I'm going to move on to other discussions needed. And I know Tony. Um, you have some discussion about billboards that yes uh, i spoke with nelson bugarn at allison outdoor and the thinking was that you have two boards of highland road uh, it would give you more bang for your buck if those were separated um, and nelson believes he's he's been working with some business people a lot and he believes that uh, we can keep the board in front of jim brown and then the one that's coming into town is right past Holland Well River. Yeah. That one would be swapped for one down near Bates Concrete. Hmm. Or there's on 441, there's also another possibility out near Smoky Mountain Systems. So that would kind of extend your local board coverage um, that you have there instead of having all of your eggs on one road. Right. Yeah. I mean, they, you either catch them there coming or going. That's the only place you have a board here. So the thought was was to spread that out. But that would happen if if everything if the planets align correctly, uh, January first, and then you all would probably have to maybe uh, talk, redo your agreement with him uh, yeah. on that. 
So, but I, I but just want to bring that to, to you all for your consideration and for your discussion. Mm -hmm. that's something that's something that's that's something that's 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 that's
Is that being marked as a yes? Yes. Yeah. Can you abstain from a vote if you feel like you're yeah. Yeah, that still, a conflict that of interest? Yeah, that still goes with the majority. So in other words, if, you if the majority vote is yes, then you abstain. That's I, I've been doing a little bit of research on that question, okay. and it, it's it's a little it's a little unclear because the law the law that there is is about elected board members. Uh, so, for say an alderman, the the bedrock the the assumption is you vote if you're present you vote and if you don't vote it goes as a yes. That's that's I mean that's in statute that says a, a non-vote goes as a, an affirmative vote. Elected board members can only abs truly abstain, and they have to do so, they have to more or less get their board's permission to be able to do so if they have a true conflict of interest, and that is something that that board is doing is going to put money in their pocket or their spouse's pocket, or that's pretty much it. That's, and there's, so in almost no cases will that, that an elected board member in North Carolina cannot just decide they don't want to vote on something. And they can't just decide that they've got a, a conflict of interest. Um, I assume, I can't find any authority that says it for certain, but I assume that all of those same rules apply to this board. And, and that's how I would advise you to treat it. So really, there is no abstention unless you really have a, a true conflict of interest. And so if you do abstain, it's a yes. Gotcha.
I was thinking a retreat would be just like an all day thing on you know the weekend or you know I was thinking <laughs> so this is really a meeting without voting. We're not allowed to yeah. vote. That's pretty much it. Well, you could also spend but, the tax dollars to go somewhere else. Well, or in town, and then have. Well, last and year we did a Sunday afternoon here. Mm -hmm. Last year it was on. Pretty much. Well, and I'm not saying we have to go somewhere and you know have fun, but. Um, oh, it it sounds fun. like skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but we have a, we have an agenda that we just kind of just, you know went and those are things we need to talk about. I, I was expecting more of a um, free for all kind of deal where you know <laughs> where there's more and which would have gone under the other discussion I guess because mm -hmm. you had a, a set agenda so if anybody had anything else it'd be under the last item other discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, is there something you want to discuss? Because I haven't adjourned. So if you want to. Have a free for all. I guess we could do it now. Uh, I think you're doing. I mean, it's up to you. No, I'm just making my comment. <laughs> just making my comment that maybe next retreat, which I know is probably a year down the road, but this is such a formal agenda. It was almost like a meeting to me. Does that, am I making? Well, anyhow, um, maybe it could be. It's always had an agenda. <laughs> Going by the rules, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll go by the rules. No. Just I mean, so, it's a great but so I didn't have a problem with the date per se, as far as on a, a Tuesday. I was expecting something different, but um, now that we're done with my first retreat, hmm. I was just thinking maybe free the next form. retreat might be could be a little bit different. So a little more free form. Maybe. Yeah. But it was what also is not to bring everybody up to And I mean, family. yes, it, it was also, because we needed some we needed Yeah, some it was also more important to bring everybody up to speed. Right, and yeah. members leaving yeah. 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 And sometimes, you know, the, the uh, retreat agenda will focus on things that aren't, like, directly the business of it, but it's, right. like, you know, team other building stuff and other, you know, other goal, goal building. Goal right, building. which is kind of more what I was expecting, actually. But that's okay. We had too much well, to do. There we was a lot of issues. If we want to have another retreat, we can have one. We will have a free for all, but it's still going to be public and it's yeah. still going to be. Oh, yeah. Right. And you can have one anytime you want to. Right. Yeah, I was. I mean, I'm still setting. I would never. If you get those new members, you won't have them anyway. Yeah, really, with, with all those new members, it probably would be. Yeah. That's if you can get a new form, too. Yeah. I mean, that's been the conflict in the past. What else do you want to do? I'm done. Yeah. I'm ready for a free call. I'm still, it's not my bedtime yet. So. Sure. Ready to go? Yeah, open yeah. Up. <laughs> yep. Be careful what you say. I'm fixing the adjourn, so now's your time. So. That's open. Speaking of retreats, okay. is it just a yearly thing? No. It has been. There's nothing that sets by law when you can or can't have a retreat. It's right. just a meeting, and like Andy said, it's a no, it's a called you know properly called meeting. You know, mm -hmm. it's either a regular or properly called. Meeting. There's nothing that says when you. Right. And now nothing. you get those as many new members as y'all are going to need. You probably want to have them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, get them on. It'll be a free for all. Right. Well, I, I totally agree with what. Okay, that was the long term, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> What's our vision as a yeah. board? You know, that's goal sort of setting. Stuff. I was thinking that. that everyone understands, and then, then you can do that. we can have Why a free for all. Why the defensive comment? I'm just, I'm just stating my case. I really don't appreciate being talked down to. Summer. I'm sorry, you felt that way. Did anyone else take that? It doesn't matter. It's how I took it. Well, I'm sorry if you feel that way, Matt. Right. Thank you for coming, and the meeting's adjourned.